Hello and welcome to my channel. Today's video we are going to be making this kind of devil looking creature. I've already made a kind of devil pattern that looks like this but then I had so many pieces from doing this one I decided I'll make one a little more on the evil side. So he's not quite as cute as the other one. Um, he's snow so from the head to the arms to the body all the way down to the feet and then you'll have to attach his horns his ears and his tail and um, embroider a couple little pieces on his face. This is a crochet along so I will be doing every stitch with you but if for some reason I do something you can't understand um, there will be a drop down menu for the first 30 seconds of each row uh, with the pattern instructions that you can follow along. I will be throwing in a little bit um, of this body base. So when I do the head and when I do the body, it will be in brown. So don't worry if you see me using brown and you're wondering what's going on. You keep using whatever color you've chosen. But I will come back and I will join you when we do the arms and then the legs and the feet. And don't forget if you enjoy my videos to hit the subscribe button and you will be notified every time I load a new video. As well, if you see anything in the background, um, there is a video tutorial on my channel for everything there. Um, I think that's it. So grab your yarn and let's get started. Okay, we are going to start with the arms and we're just going to make a knot with the loop on the end. So you'll fold your string over, wrap it around your finger and down and through. And just grab that little loop and tighten your knot so you have a small little loop on the end. And you can um, start this any way you're comfortable with, with your magic ring or your chain two. As long as you have the same amount of stitches in row one. So if you're starting this way, you're going to insert your hook, grab your yarn, pull up and through, and chain one. And that does not count as a stitch. That just attaches your yarn to this loop. And for round one, we are going to do six single crochets into the loop. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Grab a stitch marker if you're using one. And I just use a scrap of yarn. And for round two, we are going to do six increases. So that will be two single crochets in each stitch all the way around for a total of 12. So starting in that first stitch, we're going to increase. One and two. Increase again. Three and four. Increase. 
five and six. Increase seven and eight. Increase nine and ten. And your last increase, 11 and 12. For rounds three and four, we are just going to do 12 single crochets all the way around. And I am going to do um, count consecutively and do two rows of 12 for a total of 24 and then just flip my marker every time I hit 12. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So that was our first row. And now for our second row, I'm going to keep on counting. Thirteen, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 and 24. Row five, we're going to put a little tiny thumb on his arm. So if you find that that's too tricky for you or you don't want the thumb, you're just going to put a single crochet instead of this little puff stitch. Okay, so to begin row five in the next stitch, you're going to insert your hook, grab your yarn, bring it up and through, and you'll have two loops on your hook. And now you're just going to repeat that four times. So one, two, whoopsie, stitch marker, three, and if you can, four. And then you're going to grab your yarn and you're going to pull that through all those loops on the hook. If you happen to lose your yarn, I would just pull it out and start again instead of trying to find it and pull it through. So grab that, tighten it, and then you're going to put your next single crochet right beside it in the next stitch. You may have to push that thumb out a bit before you finish your single crochet and then tighten that if you need to. So you have two stitches in that row and we need 12s. So we'll be doing 10 more single crochets. So puff stitch is one, our single crochet is two, and then we'll just keep on going. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And your next stitch will be going in right here under where we just in front of where that thumb was is 
For row six, we are going to do one single crochet, one decrease, and repeat that all the way around for a total of eight. So one and a decrease. Make sure you get in the next stitch for two, three, and a decrease for four, five, and a decrease for six, seven, and our last decrease for eight. For rows 7 to 15, we are going to do 8 single crochets all the way around. And because I'm not using a row counter, um, I am going to be doing those 9 rows in sets of 3. So I'll do 3 rows of 24, 3 rows of 24, and 3 rows of 24. And then I will be flipping my stitch marker every time I go through a set of eight for those nine rows. All right, so we're going to start at one for the first three rows of nine. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Flip your marker if you're using one and keep on counting. Nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, flip your marker. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So that was our first three rows of nine, and I'm going to start at one again. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. Flipping my marker. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, flipping my marker, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 
22, 23, 24. So that's six rows of nine, and I'm going to start at one again and do my last three rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, flip my marker, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, 14, 15, 16, flipping my marker, that should be our last row, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. Now you're just going to grab a little bit of stuffing. insert it down into the bottom of the hand. Um, for me, I like to have just the hand um, st stuffed, depending on what I'm doing, but for most of the ones I'm making lately. And then the arm is kind of not stuffed and then it doesn't stick out straight out from um, your, the body. It kind of will hang down a little bit better. So depending on how you want your arm to look, just throw however much stuffing you want in there. And then you are just gonna do three single crochets across the top going through both sides of the arm. So you're gonna start in the next stitch and then you're gonna go over to the last stitch making sure you are through both sides of the loop on the front and the back. Then just grab your yarn, give it a tug if you need to, and then finish off your first single crochet. And then you're just going to do that in this next one. So that's two, and then in the last one. And that's three. Also give that a little pull. And then you're just gonna um, tie it off. Cut yourself a little bit of a tail for the arms. We're not sewing them on, but I do have a little trick at the end to kind of help um, secure the arms using this little bit of tail. So you're going to need two arms. So if you've just done the first one, I will put a little screenshot over in the next frame with a timestamp to take you back over to the um, beginning to do this arm. And then if you are done your second arm, just keep on watching, go past that screenshot, and then we'll start on the next part. To begin, we are just gonna make a loop as if we were going to start a chain. So just wrap it around your finger, down and through. We're gonna be putting six single crochets in there. So make it about just a little bigger than your hook. And we're gonna put our, our hook in loop, grab the yarn, 
pull through and just do one chain to secure our yarn to our loop. And that does not count as a stitch. So for round one, we're going to do six single crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Grab your stitch marker if you're using one, and I'm just using a piece of thread. And for round two, we're going to do six increases. So that'll be two, <clears throat> excuse me, stitches in every stitch around. So first increase, one and two. Increase, three and four. Increase five and six. Increase seven and eight. Increase nine and ten. And our last increase, eleven and twelve. Flip your stitch marker, and for round three, we are going to be doing one single crochet and one increase for a total of 18, and we'll repeat that all the way around. So one, increase, two and three, and then repeat that sequence, four, five and six. Seven, increase eight and nine, ten, increase eleven and twelve, thirteen, increase fourteen and fifteen. 16, and our last increase, 17 and 18. For row four, we are going to do two single crochets, one increase, and repeat that all the way around. One, two, and our increase three and four, five, six, increase seven and eight, nine, ten, increase for eleven and twelve, whoops, 13, 14, and our increase, 15 and 16, 17, 18, increase 19 and 20, 21, 22, and our last increase, 23 and 24. Row 5, we're going to do three single crochets, one increase all the way around, and repeat that for a total of 30. So 1, 2, 3, and an increase, four and five. Repeat that over. Six, seven, 
8, and an increase, 9 and 10. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, and an increase, fourteen and fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, and an increase for nineteen and twenty. 21, 22, 23, and 20, whoops, 24 and 25, 26, 27, 28, and our last increase, 29 and 30. Row six, we are gonna do four single crochets, one increase, repeat that all the way around for a total of 36. One, two, three, Four, increase five and six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, increase eleven and twelve. Thirteen. 14, 15, 16, increase 17 and 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, increase 23 and 24. 25, 26, 27, 28, an increase for 29 and 30. 31, 32, <clears throat> 33, 34, and an increase, 35 and 36. Whoops. For round seven, we're going to do five single crochets, one increase, repeat that all the way around for a total of 42. So one, two, three, four, five, and our increase, six and seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 12, increase, 13, and 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, increase, 20, and 21. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, increase, 
27 and 28. 29. Oops. 30. 31. 32. 33. And our increase, 34 and 35. This should be our last set, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, and our increase, 41 and 42. For rows 8 to 14, we are just going to do 42 single crochets all the way around. And that'll be 7 rows. I'll do the first row with you. So 1, 2, 3, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 30, oops, 36, 37, and we are just catching here, 38, 39, 40, 41 and 42. Okay, so that would have been row 8. So you're just going to keep continuing on row 9 to 14. Um, so that'll be six more rows. And I will come back and catch you up when we're ready to start row 15. Okay, you should be ready to start row 15, which is going to be five single crochets and one decrease. And you'll repeat that all the way around for a total of 36. So one, two, three, four, five, and we'll do a decrease for six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Decrease for twelve. Thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17,
17 and a decrease 18 19 20 21 22 23 decrease 24 25 26 27 28 29 decrease 30 31 32 33 34 35 36 whoops 31 32 33 34 35 and 36 is a decrease Row 16 is going to be four single crochets, one decrease all the way around for a total of 30. So one, two, three, four, and five is a decrease. Six, Seven, eight, nine, ten is a decrease. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen is a decrease. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 is a decrease. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25 is a decrease, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30 is a decrease. Row 17 is going to be three single crochets and one decrease all the way around for a total of 24. So one, two, three, and four is a decrease. Five, six, Seven, eight is a decrease. Oops. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve is a decrease. Thirteen. 14, 15, and 16 is a decrease. 17, 18, 19, 20 is a decrease. 21, 22, 
23, and 24 is a decrease. Row 18 is going to be two single crochets and one decrease for a total of 18. One, two, three is a decrease. Four, five, six is a decrease. Seven, eight, nine is a decrease. Ten, eleven. And 12 is a decrease. 13, 14, 15 is a decrease. 16, 17, and 18 is a decrease. Okay, I'm going to join you back now, and you should have just finished row 18 of the head, and you should have both of your arms finished. And for row 19, we're going to add the arms. And I'm going to try and do something a little different for this row. Um, because I can only put a maximum of 30 seconds across the top of the pattern. So I'm going to try and stretch it out so that whatever part we're doing is the part that's showing up and not the whole row. And if you like that better, let me know. And I will try and do that more often in my um, videos that are coming in the future. Okay, so for row 19, we are going to start with three single crochets. So one, two, and three. Then you're going to grab one of your arms with the front. Uh, strings and hopefully the thumbs, most importantly the thumbs, facing the front. You're going to insert your hook into the back stitch of the arm. And then you're going to insert it into the next stitch of the body. Going through both sides of the V's. And you're going to do three single crochets like that. So one into the next stitch and the next stitch of the body. Two. And then the next stitch of the arm and the next stitch of the body. And that is three. Now you're going to do six single crochets across, starting in the next stitch. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And grab your other arm and we're going to do the exact same thing, making sure that our string and our thumb are pointing towards the front. If for some reason your strings and thumbs aren't on the same side, 
make sure your thumb is pointing the front. And then you're just going to go in the next stitch. So that's one. Repeat that again. Two. And one more time. Three. And you should have three st stitches left. One, two, three. So you're going to do three single crochets to finish off that round. Now I'm going to pop back in the brown um, video and I will meet you back when it's time to put on the legs. For round 20, we're going to do two single crochets and one increase for a total of 24. So one, two, and an increase, three and four. Five, six, and an increase, seven and eight, nine, ten, and an increase, eleven and twelve, thirteen, fourteen. And an increase for 15 and 16. 17. 18. And an increase, 19 and 20. 21. 22. And an increase, 23 and 24. For rows 21 to 23, we're going to just do 24 single crochets all the way around. So that'll be three rows of 24. One. Two, oops, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, oops, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. And I'm just going to keep counting around till I have um, 24 times 3, so 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 
40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, so that's two rows, we got one more row, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, and 72. And there's our three rows of 24. Row 24 is going to be three single crochets, one increase, and repeat that all the way around. So one, two, three, and increase four and five. Six, seven, eight, increase nine and ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, increase fourteen and fifteen. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, increase for nineteen and twenty, twenty one, twenty two, big naughty mess here. Twenty three, do increase twenty four and twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, and our increase twenty nine and thirty. Okay, rows uh, twenty five to thirty. Is just 30 single crochets all the way around so that's six rows and I am going to let you guys do that on your own and I will come back for row 31 okay you should be done your six rows of 30 single crochet and ready to start row 31 and so for row 31 we're gonna do three single crochets and one decrease for a total of 24. So one, two, three, and a decrease for four, five, six, seven, and a decrease for eight, nine, 
10, 11, and a decrease for 12, 13, oops, 14, 15, and a decrease for 16, 17, 18, 19, decrease for 20, 21, 22, 23, and a decrease for 24. Okay, so you should have just finished row 31. And before we go any further, we are going to add the eyes. And I like to stuff my head first so I can see what it's going to look like and make sure I have them exactly where I want them. Now you're going to count down from your center ring where you made your first stitches around the loop and you're going to put your um, pin or whatever you have in between rows 10 and 11. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and then just in between 10 and 11 right there. And then now if you go down to the row where you attached your arms, you'll have those six stitches in between. So I'm just going to count over one, two, three, one, two, three. And then right in between those stitches is your center of your body. And then just come up and kind of find your center across um, your line of rows between uh, rows 10 and 11 and that is pretty close I think and I like to go into um, into one of the stitches instead of a hole and then I count the holes over from my pin so for my first eye I'm going to count over four one, two, three, and four. So my first eye is going to go right there. Oops, and I'm using 14 millimeter eyes on this one. Then I'm gonna do the same on the other side. One, two, three, four, and put my other eye right in there. Have a look at it. Make sure you're happy with um, where they're centered from the head to the arms and down the body. And if you are, we'll commit to that and we'll put our backs on. And listen for those clicks. And do the other one. There we go. Then we'll put our stuffing back in. This time we're going to um, put however much we want um, for the firmness. I like mine fairly firm in the head and not quite as firm in the body. Always being careful as you're stuffing that you're not separating your stitches, especially in your decrease row down at the bottom. 
or else you're going to see the stuffing come out. Personally, I think it's a little better to have it less stuffed than to see the white through the stitches. Okay, that should be pretty good for me. Then I'm just going to put a tiny little bit into the body for now. Not too much because you don't want to get it in your way when we do the legs. So I'm just a little over half, half filled in that. I'm about to here. Okay, now we're going to mark off our legs. So we're going to do the same thing like when we did the eyes. We're just going to fold our guy's little body down where we feel like it's nice and even and we can find the sides. So just like this. And what you want to have is all your stitches on one side or the other and none going this way. And then you're going to start at this stitch and you're going to count over six stitches and this will be your first leg. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. And you're going to go over one more into that seventh stitch. And you're going to put a little marker in there. And I'm just going to use a piece of yarn. And this will be the start of our second leg. And now you're going to count around 12 stitches, including starting with the one you just marked. So that is our first two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And go in that twelfth stitch. And you want to bring your marker through that side as well. I guess I could go this way. So this is leg one on this side. This is leg one on, or two on this side, sorry. And then you're just going to tie that so that when you're going around in leg one, you don't touch any of these stitches on the other side for leg two. And we're just going to forget about them for now. So for the first leg, rows one to six, we are just going to be doing 12 single crochets all the way around. And for me, I'm going to be doing it in um, two sets of three rows. So I'm going to count um, first three rows, 36, and then the second set of three rows, another set of 36, which will make the six rows of 12. All right, so, whoops, my yarn's on the wrong side. One, two, three, and don't worry if you have different amount of stitches um, when you start, as long as there's 12 on this side and 12 on this side. So when we get to our little marker, we don't want to go into that stitch because that is our second leg. We're going to twist around and we're going to come over to the other side not go in that stitch where our marker is and then go in the stitch beside it. So for me, this is four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. 10, 11, 
and 12 and that brings me back to my original stitch marker all right so keep on counting 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 and 24 and if this is awkward for you just take your time that's why we have the pause and fast forward buttons you can always if I'm ahead of you you can always press pause and then catch up okay so keep on counting 25 26 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, <clears throat> excuse me, and 36. So that was our first three rows, and now we'll do our second set of three rows for a total of six. So I'm going to start at one again. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. 22, 23, 24, 24, and this should be our last row, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35 and 36 and don't finish that off because we are going to be doing a color change um, 
after we do this other side of the leg in red. So you can cut that. Careful not to pull out your last stitch. Okay, now for leg two, we're gonna make our knot with the loop, but leave yourself a bit of a tail because there will be a little hole right here and we'll use the tail to sew that up after we have the legs done. So make your loop with the knot in it. Make sure you get the right side. <laughs> Insert your hook. And now we are going to go on the back side. Starting somewhere close to where you marked off your um, your second leg stitches and you're going to insert your hook in there. Oops, I got the yarn on the wrong side. Insert your hook then into your loop. And this is going to be a tad awkward, just take your time. There is absolutely no rush and you're just gonna, I don't know, slip stitch, chain one, whatever you want to call that. And that's just to attach the yarn. That's not a stitch. And now we are going to do 12 stitches all the way around, starting in that same stitch you attached. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, eleven, and then your twelfth stitch should go where you had that last stitch marked. And twelve. Whoops. You can get rid of that now. Now make sure your tail is on the outside so you're able to grab it when you need it late, later. And I'm going to use my little bow that I used um, as my new stitch marker for this leg. And you're going to turn your guy around to the back again. And starting in that first stitch you made, so not where you slip stitched or chained one, but in that next V, that'll be your first stitch of the next row. It might be a little tight. Mine's, I don't think mine was that tight. If you run into that, just take your um, darning needle and just kind of spin it around in that stitch and that'll open it up for your hook. There we go. And now we're going to start on our second row of six and I'm still counting consecutively. So this will be 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 
23 and 24. I'll flip my marker and then I've got to get in that next stitch of the next row here it can be a little hidden so make sure you're going in the right one and keep on counting 25 26 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. So that was our first three rows. And we have three more to do, and I'm going to start at one again. One, two, three, four. I'm just going to pin that leg down out of my way. It keeps. Five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21, 22, 23, and 24. So we have one more row left. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35 and our 36 stitch remember we're not going to finish that because we are going to attach our new color and i just remembered black won't work on video so i gotta go grab another color and i will be right back okay so let's attach this new color to our old color and you're just going to tie a knot a couple of times Holding it nice and close to your hook. Whoop. And then you 
you can cut your red because we are done with it for now. So let's finish that stitch off by pulling our new color through our last stitch. And this will be row seven. So for row seven, we're gonna do one single crochet, one increase, repeat that all the way around for a total of 18. So one, and increase, two and three, four, Increase five and six, seven, increase eight and nine, ten, increase eleven and twelve. Thirteen, increase fourteen and fifteen, sixteen, and increase for seventeen and <clears throat> eighteen. Row eight, we are just going to be doing 18 single crochets all the way around. So one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Row nine, you're gonna do two single crochets, one increase, repeat that around for a total of 24. So one, two, and an increase, three and four, five, six, and an increase, seven and eight, nine, Ten and an increase, eleven and twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and an increase, fifteen and sixteen. 17, 18, and an increase, 19 and 20. Oops. 21, 22, and an increase, 23 and 24. 
Okay, for rows 10 and 11, we are just gonna do 24 single crochets all the way around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, and I'm just going to keep on counting for one more row, for our two rows of twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, and 48. Okay, the next row we're going to be going in the back loops, and I don't think I've done any back loops yet on this one. So, if you um, have never done um, front loop, back loop before, your regular stitch would be going um, in through here under both V's. Now, if you're going to be doing the back loop, you go down in between those two V's and out and grab your yarn. Okay, so for row 12, we are going to be doing two single crochets, one decrease all the way around in the back loops. So down through that V and grab your yarn. So that's one, two, and decrease for three. Four, five, decrease for six, seven, eight, and decrease for nine. Make sure you're getting through the whole chunk of yarn. Ten, eleven, and 
and decrease for 12, 13, 14, and decrease for 15. Sixteen, seventeen, and our last decrease, eighteen. Now before we go any further, if any more decreases, we're going to add our little bit of stuffing. So what you're going to want to do is you want to get a little bit up into the body, however firmness you want. Mine's going to be on the softer side, and then you want his legs to be on the firmer side, which will help him to stand up. Um, oh, there it is. Just remember Kind of, kind of think about how much you're putting in on this side because you're going to want to match it when you do the other side. Hmm. I didn't realize my stitch marker had come all the way to the front already. I haven't actually tested this out yet, so I hope his, his feet aren't too wide and will sit flat with the other foot that wide. All right, I'm gonna hold tight right there. Um, it, what you want to achieve, the whole reason we went in the back loop is we want this to be flat. So you don't want your stuffing to puff out too much over there, but you want enough stuffing so that he can stand on that little hoof of a foot. I think I'm going to stop there and I'm going to do the rest of my decreases and before I close it up I'll add a little bit more if I need to. Okay so for row um, 13 we're going to do one single crochet, one decrease, repeat that all the way around for a total of 12. I should know that. Okay, and now we're going back um, normal way under both sides of that V. So one, decrease for two, three, decrease, for four, five, and decrease for six. Now if you're using the um, black yarn, try and make sure you're not grabbing the stuffing when you're going through here or you're going to have a heck of a time getting rid of it. Um, it shows up really good on the black. Seven. And a decrease for eight. Nine. And decrease for ten. Eleven. And decrease for twelve. And for row 13, nope, sorry, row 14, our last row, we're just going to do six decreases. And if I go out of camera, I apologize. I can't, I can't tip it any higher than I have it. So I'll try, I'll try and get it in here. So one decrease. Two, 
two decreases. Three decreases. Four decreases. Five decreases. And six decreases. And then you're just going to slip stitch in the next stitch. Um, and I have to redo this in black, so I'm not going to close mine. But just go around in and out of these stitches, pull it tight, tie it in a knot, and then thread it up and out the back somewhere right close maybe a couple couple rows up from where um, you started the legs and I'm gonna put a um, time stamp in the next frame so you can go back and do um, this part that I did in the white for the other foot and it'll be exactly the same and I will join you back up once both feet are done. And if for some reason you have never closed up before, I'll try and remember on the, on the second foot when I get it done, when I come back to um, show that part and then pulling it up through. Okay, I'm going to quickly close up the foot and then we will put all our other strings um, away, get them cut off. So we'll close it up. You're just going to weave in and out. I've been just grabbing the top front loop of the stitch lately. I don't know if it makes a huge difference, but it may keep you from getting a little bit of a hole on the bottom. And then pull that tight and closed. And then you're just going to tie a little knot there right close to the center. And then you're going to pull that into the middle of the foot and you're going to bring it up out the back. And you want to bring it out in the same spot as your other leg. So they're both coming out the same hole. And then you're going to pull them quite a bit so that it kind of concaves the foot a bit, makes it flatter. And then you'll just tie those. And you want this to be fairly tight because there will be a little bit of a give when you, um, when they kind of release. And then we will re-thread our needle. And take them out through the body somewhere. And then now we gotta close up this little hole. 
So take that tail that you um, had when you first started the second leg. And you're just going to weave that in and out between these two stitches and these two stitches. And we're just going to do that a couple of times back and forth. So you're happy with how much space is left. And when you're on the back, whoops, you'll just give that a tie. And then you're also going to hide that out through the body somewhere. And then we'll do these little arm tails. And you're just going to go in the same stitch that you sewed the arm on to. So if that's your single crochet right there, then you're gonna go into that same hole, out the back center, and do with the same, same thing with the other arm. Find your last stitch of the arm and go in there and come out the same stitch you took the other arm tail through. And you're going to give them one tie, making sure that the yarn only crosses the one time. So the yarn from this arm is going this way, and the yarn from this arm is going that way. Lift him up, and then you're just going to pull that, and those arms are going to kind of pop in and come forward a bit, and that just makes it so they're not quite as wobbly and loose right where you join them. And then you'll give it a couple more ties. And hide those ends as well. can move on to the next part. For the ear, we are going to make our knot with the loop on the end. Grab your yarn, 
chain one. Remembering that's just to attach the yarn. It is not a stitch. And for round one, we are going to put six single crochets into the loop. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. And six. And then pull your tail if you have a bit of a hole there. Grab a stitch marker if you're using one. And for round two, we're going to put six single crochets all the way around. Oops. One, two, three, four, five, and six. For round three, we're going to do one single crochet, one increase for a total of nine stitches. So one and an increase, two and three. Four and an increase, five and six. Seven and an increase, eight and nine. Row four. You're going to do two single crochets, one increase for a total of 12. One, two, increase, three and four, five, six, increase, Seven and eight, nine, ten, and an increase, eleven and twelve. Row five, we're going to do one, or sorry, three single crochets and one increase for a total of 15. One, two, three, and an increase, four and five. Six, seven, eight, and an increase, nine and ten. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, and an increase, fourteen and 15. For row six, you are going to do three single crochets and one decrease for a total of 12. One, two, 
three and a decrease for four, five, six, seven, and a decrease for eight, nine, ten, eleven, and a decrease for twelve. Row seven, you're going to do two single crochets, one decrease for a total of nine. One, two, decrease for three, four, five, decrease for six, seven, eight, and decrease for nine. Row eight, we're gonna do four decreases to begin with. So one decrease, two decreases, three decrease, and four decreases. Now, instead of slip stitching in the next stitch, you're gonna skip that stitch and you're gonna slip stitch in the stitch after that. And then just tie off. And you're gonna need two of these. So if you're on your first one, I will be putting a screenshot over in the next frame so you can follow that timestamp over to the to start again at the beginning. And if you're on your second one, just keep on going and the next part will be on its way. All right, now we're going to do the horns and I'm going to use purple because you won't be able to see me doing the black very easily. And you're just going to fold your yarn over, make your knot with the loop on the end. Grab your yarn. Chain one, remembering that's not a stitch, that's just to attach the yarn. And for round one, we are gonna put five single crochets into the loop. One. Two. Three. four, and five. Grab a stitch marker if you're using one. If you're using black, I would suggest a stitch marker um, because if you um, get lost on a row, it's hard to um, find all your stitches sometimes. So for rows two and three, you're just going to do five single crochets all the way around. And I'm just going to do two rows at the same time. So I'm going to go to 10 and flip my marker when I hit my first set of five. One. Two. three, four, and five. 
and make sure you're going all the way over to the next stitch and not accidentally going in the same stitch. Because when you do these little um, rows, it's very easy to put your stitch in the wrong spot. So I'm going to flip my marker and keep on counting. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. And ten. For row four, you're going to do one increase four single crochets for a total of six. So increase one and two and then single crochet three, four, five, and six. Row five, you're going to do six single crochets all the way around. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Row six, you're going to do one increase, five single crochets for a total of seven. So increase, one and two, and then single crochet the rest of the way around. Three, four, Five, six, seven. Row seven, you're going to do seven single crochets all the way around. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. Row eight, you're going to do one increase and six single crochets for a total of eight. So increase one and two. And then single crochet the rest of the way around. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Row nine, you're just going to do eight single crochets all the way around. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. Row 10, you're going to do one increase and seven single crochets around for a total of nine. So increase one and two, and then single crochet the rest of the way around. Three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Row 11 will just be nine single crochets all the way around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine row 12 will be one increase and eight single crochets for a total of 10 increase one and two and then single crochet around three four five Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Row thirteen, you're just going to do ten single crochets all the way around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Row 14, you're going to do one increase and nine single crochets. So increase, oh, for a total of 11. So increase one and two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Row fifteen, you're just going to do eleven single crochets all the way around. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Row 16, you're going to do one increase and 10 single crochets for a total of 12. So increase one and two and single crochet around three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And row 17 is going to be 12 single crochets all the way around. So one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Now, assuming you're making this horn for the devil character in the video and you want to make it longer, um, just keep going with your 12 single crochets until it's the length that you want. And if for some reason you're using this horn um, on a head that's bigger than um, this video and you want to make the horn rounder, I would, I'm sure you've noticed the pattern. You just do one increase row with your first stitch as an increase, and then you repeat that same amount in the next row. So it would be 13, 13, 14, 14, 15, 15, till you get the base, the width that you want. Um, but do be careful how wide your base is, because um, depending on the head, it might look funny. Um, so you're going to need two of these. So if you've just finished your first one, there will be a screenshot over in the next frame with a timestamp that will take you back to the beginning of the horn. So you can do the second one. If you're on your second one, just keep on watching. Uh, and in about five seconds, five, 10 seconds, um, we will be on to the next part. Okay, so this is the tail. Um, I'm not going to do the whole tail with you because um, we'll spend forever just doing all these rows. Um, so I'm going to do the little point here and then the first row or two here. And then I'm going to let you decide how long you want to make your tail. And um, if you want to put a wire in it or not. I think I'm going to be putting um, some coated garden wire in there. Um, jewelry wire would work. A pipe cleaner might work, but it might not be um, stiff enough. Okay, so make your loop. And we are going to only be doing four single crochets to begin with, which I know is tricky. I really don't like doing less than six, but if you want that point, you're going to have to try and get that, the four single crochets. If you can't, just do six in the first row and then continue on to row two. So grab your yarn pull up and through and chain one and now we are going to do four single crochets into the loop so one two three and four Grab a stitch marker if you're using one. And then we're going to do one single crochet and one increase. Um, and then repeat that for a total of six. So when you're going in these small little rounds, make sure all your stitches are in the right stitch. Because <clears throat> sometimes it pulls over quite a bit. And you think you're going in the next stitch, but you're actually going in the same stitch. Okay, so one, so 
this is our stitch right here. So it looks like we're, we need to go here, but we actually are going all the way over here for an increase. So three and four. Or two and three, sorry. So we got one, two, and three. Then our next stitch is four. And our last stitch is an increase for five and six. I'll try and uh, keep the instructions up longer if I can for that part where I just miscounted. Row three is going to be two single crochets and an increase for a total of eight. So one, two, and an increase, three and four. five, six, and an increase, seven and eight. Uh, row four is going to be three single crochets, one increase for a total of 10. So one, two, three, and an increase, four and five, six, seven, eight, and an increase, nine and 10. Row five is gonna be four single crochets, one increase and repeat that for a total of 12. So one, two, three, four, and an increase, five and six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and an increase, 11 and 12. Row six is just going to be 12 single crochets all the way around. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Okay. Row seven is going to be six decreases. So one, decrease, two decreases, three decreases, four, 
four decreases. five decreases and six decreases but do not finish off that last decrease stop when you have your three loops and then you are going to change your color and i'm just going to use this stitch marker as my new color so this will you'll be attaching your main your main color to do the rest of the tail. I'm just showing you a sample right now. So I'm gonna cut this purple off, which would be your black, if you're doing it in the same colors as me. You're going to put a little, or let's finish that off first. Okay. So pull that new color through that last half double crochet. You're going to put a tiny bit of stuffing in there. Just to hold its shape. Remembering if you put wire in later, you're going to want to have a little bit of wiggle room in there. to Get that wire in there. And now you're just gonna do six single crochets all the way around till you get to the length you want, or you don't even have to count. The first row is gonna be six single crochets. And if you can um, just keep going until it's the length you want, around and around and around. I counted how many rows I had, and I ended up, there's 26, rows of six. I guess I can't get all the way around. Um, I had a measure and it's five and a half inches from the red to the red. All right, to finish off the tail, if you wanna put a little bit of wire in it, I am just using this little um, garden wire. It's just from the dollar store. And I'm going to leave the coating on because you're not going to see it anyway. So I'm just going to make a little bend and I'm going to give it a twist. And I want to put that up inside the tail if I can and or the tip of the tail. And then I'm just going to make it about the length of my tail. I haven't decided how it stays up yet. I might just tack a string up along the body. And then we're just going to thread that in. You want to make sure that this end is not going to be poking anywhere. And that is also why we bent this, but I think I got to make it more of a point here to get it in. If you have the skill for it and you can put the curved end in the tip when you make it and then go around your wire, that's probably the best way. But with only six stitches, I didn't even attempt to try it that way. I'm really close. That's the only bad part about using the coating is that um, it kind of sticks to your yarn a bit and grabs at it. All right, I got it in the tip there, so I'm going to just pull this down if I can. Try not to stretch your stitches out. And there, you can just kind of bend it however you want it. And then you just want to take your end 
And you want to close up this these last stitches so you're going to want to put two or three single crochets in two will fit nicely three might make it a little more secure so i'm just going to put two in oops that wire is right in my way here two and we do that so it's a little tighter and I've already cut my yarn so I have that little tail to sew it on and um, what I'll probably do is sew it up a bit so that I can tack it here so it'll stay and I can just do whatever I want with it Hi guys, so you haven't seen the end of this yet, but I got to the end and thought something was missing. So I added these little red, um, I wrapped a yarn around his horns in red. And then I thought he was still missing something and it wasn't until I was about three quarters into editing that I realized it was the bow tie maybe. So I'm just going to pop this little bow tie in. If um, you don't want to do it, it's totally optional. But I'll have it in here just in case. Um, because by the time you get to the end, if you're the same as me and you just see this and you think there's something missing right here, um, I think the little bow tie will help. So I'm just going to pop that in now and then we will continue on to the rest of the character. Okay, so for the bow tie, you're going to leave yourself a little bit of a tail for tying around his neck. Then you're going to make your knot with the loop on the end. And we're going to be chaining. So we're going to chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then in your second chain from the hook, so this one right here, you're going to do six single crochets across. One. two, three, four, five, and six. Chain one and then turn. So you're working on the other side and you're going to do six single crochets across again. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Then you'll just tie that off, leaving yourself a big tail again, because you're going to need both ends. So you should have this little kind of rectangle shape. Then you're going to grab your darning needle. It doesn't really matter which side is the front, but if there's a side you prefer, you want to be on the back side. And you want to take this so you kind of hide the knot a bit, but keep your point. And you're just going to go across three stitches or two and a half, I guess. So just to the center. 
and you're going to pull that tight enough that you hide that knot in the back but you're not pulling it in and getting rid of the point of your rectangle and do the same thing on the other side and go through those same stitches I'm sorry, I'm kind of rushing through this, but it's fairly simple concept. And then pull that one the same as before, keeping your point, but kind of hiding in the knot in the back. Whoops, sticking in my fingers, they're so dry. Then you're going to tie a knot to keep this in the center. And you want to tie your first knot fairly loosely because you don't want to bring the points um, together. So the first one will be just kind of sec to secure it fairly loose. And then your next one, you will tie a little bit tighter. So firm enough that it's tightening up, but not pulling the points in and then your last one if you've got the right tension pull that nice and tight if you're still bringing the ends in start tightening them a little bit more and do another knot I'm gonna take my longest side and I'm just gonna wrap that as I pinch the middle I'm gonna wrap that around a few times I don't want that knot there though. So four or five times around, however you feel, and then flip it back to the back side, and you're gonna tie that really tight. I'm gonna tie it twice. I got a little bit extra on one side here, but you want to make sure it's even on both sides, fairly even. So it'll look like that. And I'm going to grab my black one. And you're just going to tie that on his neck. Tighten that as much or as little as you want. And I'm going to put a bow in mine, but you, if you're happy with how yours looks and you want it to not be detachable, then you can uh, tie it tight and then put the ends in. And then there's your little guy with a bow tie. Okay, I'm going to pop you back into making um, the rest or wherever. I haven't decided where I'm putting this in, probably after the tail, but who knows. Um, okay, so see you back in the tutorial. Okay, we're going to pin the head to see where we want to have our stitches. So for the eyebrows, we're just going to come on the top row of the eye and go over one stitch. And then we're going to come on the outside of the eye and up a row, not here, but back a little bit. And we're going to mirror that on the, on the other side. So top of the eye, and then go over to one stitch. And same thing for the top of the eyebrow. I'm going to go to the outside of the eye and then up a row. So we're just kind of on the outside and the inside, but over a stitch in a row. For the mouth, you're going to find um, the center of your eye where you would have put your eye in. And you're going to count down one, two, three rows and stick 
your pin in. You're going to do the same thing on the other side. Come to the outside of the eye and count down three rows. One, two, three. And then you're going to find kind of the center and you're going to go down one row and stick your pin in. And this will just be if you want to give them a little bit of a grin. And then if you want to give them little teeth, I haven't decided if these are working yet or not, but if um, if you see them in the beginning, then you know they did. I'm just going to come over one, two on each side of that bottom center pin. One, two. Okay, so you're going to come in just under that center pin. You're going to go over to one of the blue pins and come out. Leaving a little bit of a string on the end for tying. And you're going to come all the way over to the other blue pin. You're going to go down and you're going to come out right where that center blue pin is. Then you're going to go under the mouth. Trying not to lift that stitch because you want it tight. And then just pull it down and come back into that same stitch and go up to an eyebrow. And that will kind of pull that mouth down just enough to give them a bit of a grin. And you're going to go over to your inside pin. And you're going to come, try and go down, grab under a little bit of stuffing, and then come up where you have this other inside eyebrow pin. That'll just kind of, it doesn't matter so much on this one, but if you're using, if you're using white, then that'll kind of hide the black going straight across. Then you're going to come up to this outside eyebrow pin. And then you're going to come back down where you first started. And of course, you can make their eyebrows and your mouth different sizes if you want to play with it. And then you're just going to give it a little tie, not too tight because you don't want to pull um, all your face parts more than you need. And then you're just going to put that down and out through the back of his head somewhere. Again, careful not to pull it too tight. But you want that knot hidden inside there. Now if you want to try the teeth. I think I actually might go one closer just so that's under that bar. So I'm going between where I had my center blue pin 
and where I have my, where I was going to put the teeth. I just don't want them to not, um, not connect where it's black there. So you're just going to go around a couple of times. Making sure, whoop, that's not good. Making sure you're um, staying underneath the black of his smile. And then you're going to go over to the other matching stitch. So again, I'm in between where I was going to put my tooth and the center blue pin I had. And then I'm just going to go same amount of times as I did on the other side. So that's once, this will be twice. And this will be three. Make sure they're tighter. There we go. And when you come down your third one, just come out where you first started. Hopefully. I don't know, they probably should have been here, but I'll let you guys decide that. And then just give that a tie and you'll put that out the back. Again, don't pull it too hard because you don't want your teeth to sink in more. Okay, let's put the horns on. And you're going to want to put a little bit of stuffing in them. A little more in the bottom than in the tip. If you want them to bend, you're going to want to have less in the tip so that it's not straight. And if you can, you can put your hook in and then just kind of pull that up a bit. You can also put wire in these. I'm not going to put wire in them. I'm just going to use my um, hand to kind of make them turn how I want. So like that. But that won't be permanent. So if you want it to be more of a permanent curve, you'll want to put a piece of wire or pipe cleaner up in there. All right, so do your second one. Try and do it exactly the same as you did your first one. curve how I want it so that's good enough so now grab your pins and what I did was I started kind of straight even with my first round and then I was I started right about here and right about here um, for the horns so we'll just pin them on not sure 
how good a camera angle I'm going to get for you. And I put my tails on the inside. And that's where my first pin is going to go. Hmm. Can't reach. Okay, try this. Then I just kind of swing it to see where I want it. Do I want them far apart? Or I'm closer together? And I'm going to kind of go right in between. And you're going to put another pin in where you want it to end. And then a pin in the front and a pin in the back. Now you got to match that um, with your other horn. So you want to line it up on that second row, kind of centered across. Oops, put your pin in. And then kind of match your other pin. Go across that line. And stick your other pin in. Kind of check that they're even. I might move it at one stitch forward. And then put one in the front. Making sure that they're staying pretty even. And one in the back. Now you probably want to pin that more when you sew it on. You can just have a look now and see what your ears are going to look like there. That should be okay. Now you're going to sew. Oops. Sew those in, and it's going to be a little hard to see. I might actually put a couple more pins in here. Because I don't want it to move around on me. So you're going to go, actually I went this way last time, it seemed a lot easier. You're going to go around your, your um, row, down and under. I got a funny stitch right there, but that's... And then you're going to come up in your next stitch. Try and make sure you're going through both of the loops of that next stitch. And try not to do what I just did and get that stuffing coming through. And you're going to go down the stitch beside that, around a row, and out. And then up the next stitch. And make sure you're not skipping stitches. Because it's easy to do, especially with the black. And you're going to go down, catching both those loops under a row and over and make sure you're staying under the horn so you're not seeing um, little black lines where your stitches would be and 
and up the next stitch. Oop, pulling my horn off a little bit here. And then down the next stitch. Deciding this is about where, ah, whoopsie. This is about where you'll decide where the bottom of your horn's gonna sit. And I'm, my pin's in this row, so I'm gonna go around over one stitch into that row. And I just keep going up and down through each stitch. So you get to the back side where you started. Whoops. And I'm just going to go one more time where that knot was just to make sure that it's nice and tight there. So I'm putting a stitch in this first stitch I started. And then you're just going to tie a knot somewhere right close. It doesn't have to be too fancy because we're going to tie this again um, in the back when we have our other horn done. Just like we did the arms and the legs. So go down where you can kind of hide that knot and then come out the back somewhere in the center-ish. Then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Just double check that your horns look like they're fairly even still and right where you want them. And you're just going to do the exact same thing. Go down and around a row and then up and down the stitches. Trying not to catch that stuffing as you go. I'm sewing this on. I'll just remind you all if you like my videos, make sure you hit the subscribe button and you will be notified every time I load a new video. Um, and I've also got a Facebook page where you can take your. Um, a photo of whatever you've made and you can share it with me on there. Um, leave me a comment. 
I try and get back to them all, but I'm starting to get a few more that I'm used to, so it takes me a little bit longer now. stitch or you should be close so I'm just gonna go down one more time here just to make sure there isn't a hole where I knotted it to begin with double check before you commit to that it's a lot easier to take out now than after you've knotted it and thought you were finished. And I think they look okay. So I'm just going to put a knot in right close to where I just was. And okay. And then down right close to the horn and out the center back of the head. And then give that a tie. You can pull them in a bit if you want. And then just take that out the back somewhere. Cut your string. And then we'll move on to the next part. All right, now we're gonna kind of shape his face so it goes down like this. And I always do this different and I might forget what I'm doing. You're gonna go about the center of your neck, right around where you attach the arms. And you're gonna go up to the inside of the eye just where the row and the eye meet. Oh, I can't get in there. There we go. Leave a little bit of thread down at the bottom. And then you're going to go over to the outside of the eye on that same row. And you're going to come down right beside where you went in. And then you're gonna go in that hole over to the next hole and you're gonna do the opposite of what you just did. So you're gonna go in that same hole now and you're gonna go to the outside of the eye. And then to the inside of the eye matching up where you went in if you can. And then you're going to come down the same hole you just started in. Now you should be able to pull those how you want them. Careful not to spread your stitches too much. If you need to, push down on your eyes while you pull your strings. And just tighten it till it's where about where you want it and I think that's pretty good for me 
starting to make my mouth go a little crooked. So I don't think I'm going to pull it anymore. And then you're just going to tie that nice and tight. Under his chin. And then hide those strings out the back. Okay, so now let's pin the ears on. And I'm going to kind of line up our starting um, stitch with that tail just under the um, one row from the eye so right here going around kind of even with the arms and the horns i'm just going to stick that in there so when we start we'll be putting our tail in that stitch and we'll be going up about let's see four rows i think so one two three and four so we should be ending on this row where his eye just ends if you're using the same 14 millimeter eyes as me and it's about two rows between the ears and the horn so if you're happy with that grab your needle oops and you're going to come down and around in that first stitch and I'm going to do that twice just to make it nice and secure And you're going to go up a stitch and through getting through both layers of the ear and then you're going to come around into this second stitch so you're going to go under that bar and come up just like that so you're in the second row now and I think I'm also going to go in there again in that second stitch and then I'm going to come up this third row make sure you get under a bar I'm not sure if I am so let's let me check here I think so yep and then you're going to go in your third stitch of the ear through both layers Nice and close to the front. And I'm going to do that one more time. Oops. I don't want that stuffing in there if I can help it. And then we're going to go in that fourth row i'm just going to take that pin out make sure i'm in there so it's just in there so this is my next one right here coming out right at the top of my eye and then going in that fourth spot in my ear and repeating that one time
Then you'll tie that off in the back somewhere, nice and close. I'm going to go in that third bar that we used. And then tie that nice and tight. And then take that and hide it down kind of in the center of his head somewhere. Now we got to match the other side um, pins. Okay, so we're going to take our um, tail and we're going to line that up how we did the first one. So even with one row under his eyes and kind of between his horn and his arms, we'll pin that in that row. You may have to move it around. Let's see. We got one, two, a well, one, two, three, four, five, about six stitches. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to go back one more row. Okay, that looks good enough. So pin in your next row and your next stitch. Your next row and your next stitch. And your next row and your next stitch. Double check again. I think we're okay. And then you'll sew that one on. So make sure you're in that row you want to be in. Have your pin. Repeat that. And then go where your next pin is, making sure you're going straight up and not twisting your ear around too much. Go in that second row. And second stitch. And go one more time. I'm having a hard time staying out of the stuffing. You're going to go in that third row. And the third stitch. One more time. And then we'll go in that fourth row. You can always double check that you're in the same, still in the right spot, going across the top, whoop, going across the top of the eye. And into that fourth spot on the ear and do it one more time. check and then I'll tie that off and remember I went in the third one so if you want to do the same go in that third one same 
same place that you put the other one. Now you're going to tie this one time, making sure that when you're done, your strings are only crossed once. So like this. So your strings are still the same way. You've got one tie in there. Turn them around, keeping your strings in the same direction. And now we're just going to kind of bring his head in a little bit like this by pulling on these strings. So just pull them in until you're happy with where they are. Careful not to break them. And I think that's good enough for me. And then just tie it a couple more times. And we'll thread them out. For the tail, you're just going to decide how high you want him up. I'm going to put him about two or three rows from where his legs joined. So if his legs join right here, one, two, three, and I'm going to go around that third row. So I'm just going to go around one bar of that row and then I'm going to go through that one single crochet that we used to close it up and I'm going to do that two times and then I'm going to do the same thing in the next step second stitch on the very bottom. Now you can do a few more times if you want just for security. I'm going to be stitching up the length of his tail so I'm not too worried about how I have it here because I'm going to secure it along his back a bit. And I'm just going to be going down through his tail up through the next row and then up through his tail through both sides. I'm just going to do that all the way up till I'm happy with where I have it. I think this might be it but Tail is going to be a little heavy, so you're going to want to make sure this is um, reinforced a little bit. You might want to go back down one more time. And that is what I think I will do. So I'm going to go, I went around this stitch. And I'm going to go in through the tail. I'm not going to go up anymore, but I'm going to go back in and around that same row in a different stitch. Because this will put a lot of pressure on this one row at the top where you're attaching. Work your way back down. Okay. 
and I hope you guys can do a bit neater job than I'm doing. I'm just trying to go a little quicker so that I can be done this video. And then just tie it. And bring it out somewhere. And then just bend it however you want it. I think I could have gone a little higher with my um, tail so it would be a little longer. And there we go. Well, he's done, but I feel like he's missing something. Maybe it's just because I can't see his horns um, in the background. Um, I wonder. All right, let's try something a little different. Um, I don't know if this will be a permanent thing, but try maybe wrapping some red or whatever color you used around his horn. Do a little better job than this. So maybe attach it here and then bring that down and around and attach it back in the back or if you can attach it up top. I think that might help. Yeah, to me anyways, that kind of just gives them a little something extra. Um. So don't forget to um, hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed this video and um, then you will get a notification when I load a new video and you won't miss my next project. Oh, and another reminder, anything you see in the background, I have a video for. If you go to my channel and click on um, videos, you'll see them all. And then I have a couple playlists if you want to go through the playlists. Um, they're divided a little bit. Um, so thanks for watching. And happy crocheting.